Now we need to talk about how actually malnutrition is detected. In Angan, what is what they do basically is weigh the child every month and enter the weight for age on the growth charts. Uh, there is a growth chart for uh, girls and there is a growth chart for boys separately because the WHO wants it separate because the norms are uh, slightly different. So when they enter this, there are three tracks. One is the normal green track. Second is moderate malnutrition, which is yellowish. And the third one, red, is meant for severe malnutrition. The child's weight is falling in that category. Appropriate category is marked and then a uh, decision is made. Uh, so the child could be uh, underweight for age, either severe or moderate or normal. It seems that about 8% children uh, are in the red category in uh, the tribal areas and overall about 30 to 40 percent are in the uh, both malnourished categories that is the yellow and the red zone about 60 to 70 percent children are supposed to be normal now the anganwadi statistics that is displayed on the icds system website uh, shows that about 90 percent children overall in the state uh, belong to the normal category now this could be somewhat exaggerated uh, if we optimize that i think uh, with whatever learning we have done, it's about 80% are in the uh, normal category, about 20% fall in the malnourished category. Now, to uh, do a proper weighing of the child, uh, they have been given uh, uh, the uh, salter scales, which are hung from the roof or from the uh, door frame, and the child is webbed in a jolly. Uh, there are, of course, the issues of inaccuracies and the conditions of the uh, weight scale. Uh, there are some scales which are not doing very well. They have some error uh, and these need to be serviced and standardized checking has to be done uh, at least once in two, three months. So all these issues are there, but even then uh, weight uh, charting seems to be the most dominant and most uh, important part of the Anganwadi growth monitoring business. In some Anganwadis on experimental basis, they have given electronic weighing scales. Now there are two, three types and uh, the one I am showing you here is the uh, electronic uh, weight scale on which the child is supposed to sit and uh, this two is programmed for uh, detecting malnutrition. The moment uh, the child sits there and the weight is recorded, then uh, that gives the electronic weight scale will give you uh, the grade of malnutrition, whether it's normal, moderate or severe malnutrition because uh, the data is basically fed into that uh, electronic weight machine and for that Anganwadi this serves as a good tool but there are there are issues about uh, these uh, weighing scales there are issues of charging because electricity uh, is not there in Anganwadi uh, Anganwadi is anywhere so they have to take home and charge it then there are some accuracy issues and uh, it is said that some of them uh, over report uh, weights so uh, this needs to be standardized but uh, on the whole it seems that the the uh, old mechanical clock like weight scale is the most useful uh, on such a wide scale then there are uh, the other things like taking height or mid arm circumference the height is measured in some anganwadis that there are some there are some confusions about whether to record height or not so in some anganwadis they are doing it some districts they are not doing it but when it is done, what it is done is uh, they stick a measuring tape on the wall and measure it, measure the child's height against that. Now, ideally, a child's uh, height has to be taken on an infantometer, but infantometers are a far cry from uh, the circumstances of an Anganwadi, and uh, we don't we don't think of infantometers at this moment. Uh, so we take for all practical purposes a height against the wall uh, with a major tape. There could be some stereodometers uh, which are a different version of uh, tape. Now you pull the stereodometer um, instrument from above and put it on the head of the uh, child and then the window gives you the height. So the height measurement uh, is still not very standardized and I think uh, uh, the Anganwadi system is in two minds about this. Now, why they uh, measure height at all? One is that uh, the height is uh, supposed to give a measure of stunting. 
but stunting is not monitored by anganwadi worker at this uh, stage because probably uh, the lack of standardization and lack of training etc the anganwadi uh, on the whole in india is not geared to um, monitor stunting what they do here is uh, basically use height and arrive at a, a measure of vesting now for this uh, they have given them booklets where you have charts for girls and uh, boys and you can uh, uh, enter your height there and see what the expected weight should be if the expected weight the real weight is less than uh, the normal or expected weight then it is called vesting now this could be uh, moderate vesting or severe vesting severe the vesting itself is a very important criterion because it gives you kind of acute malnutrition status an acute malnutrition status especially the severe one is supposed to lead to a mortality so they need to uh, take a cue from this and admit children which are severely wasted into some kind of rehab camps about which we'll learn later the second uh, in the measurement that has been done in some of the anganwadis again uh, there is also confusion on this uh, is the mid arm mid upper arm circumference is called as musc in short now uh, this is measured as we show in the clip and uh, the parameters are that below 11.5 cm this is severe malnutrition the red zone between 11.5 to 11.5 to 12.5 is yellow zone which is moderate malnutrition and above that it is normal now this is for a child which is from 6 months to 3 years now this is a qualitative test kind of but actually uh, the midarm circumference uh, is a quantitative measure and we need to find in this uh, this uh, um, test to uh, understand and arrive at a better measure of malnutrition so if we suppose move it to 13.5 cm or 12.5 cm as a cut off point for severe malnutrition then uh, we'll probably have a better yield of uh, uh, malnutrition so that it is uh, comparable to other measurements of malnutrition but on the whole today uh, the uh, severe malnutrition which is below 11.5 cm is admitted to rehab centers and it is mainly uh, used as an additional test for uh, finding malnutrition so finally we have to arrive at some kind of diagnosis for if the child is malnourished either by underweight criterion or by vesting or by midarm circum circumference being lower than uh, 11.5 cm this is an additional uh, uh, criterion of pedal edema that is foot edema uh, that you can see in this in this picture and uh, these four criteria are supposed to uh, detect malnutrition uh, but the uh, decision to admit a child in rehab centers is mainly done by the rbsk teams that is the teams sent by the health department uh, which check vesting and midarm circumference uh, the underweight uh, for age is not a very cogent criterion today for admitting for rehab and uh, pedal edema of course uh, is an important criterion and uh, uh, based on uh, this uh, these findings uh, you decide that a child is malnourished and then you admit it either at a village uh, child development center that is called vcdc the second level is the child treatment center which is uh, either at the primary health center or a rural hospital uh, generally at a block level taluka level place and the third level is the district level where you have nutritional rehabilitation centers or nutritional uh, or nrcs now uh, in a village if it is not possible to uh, do a camp approach that is vcdc sometimes they have a home vcdc for instance in some villages even may not have as many children to qualify for a camp so if you have only one or two children then probably it is better to go home and uh, give all the services that you otherwise give in the vcdc uh, here uh, we'll see some of the uh, rehab centers at the uh, village level in the anganwadi uh, you have a 9 to 5 9 to 4 o'clock uh, vcdc Uh, where uh, about four to five, six feeds are given, and uh, there is a recess in which the mother goes home at twelve o'clock, comes back at two o'clock, uh, and she is expected to give a feed in that period also. Uh, amoxicillin is given to reduce infections. 
then uh, albendazole is given for worms and there are some additional uh, micronutrients and uh, vitamin A is also given appropriate uh, uh, for that age and uh, the checkup is done so that uh, the child gains about uh, in a period of four weeks at a village uh, VCDC it's about 500 grams sometimes 800 grams uh, the first week is often spent in uh, just catching up and uh, some weight is actually lost because of uh, this uh, loss of edema uh, if the child is not well uh, after this VCDC um, tenure uh, or if it is too severe then it is uh, supposed to be admitted to the uh, child treatment center uh, here we are going to see uh, uh, camps such a camp in the Jawar Taluka of Maharashtra where a CTC is organized at the primary center and uh, here uh, we give special feeds the special feeds comprise of milk sugar oil and uh, possibly the groundnut flour uh, of course micronutrients added and the child and the mother are supposed to stay there uh, for about three weeks and uh, take all the feeds all the treatment is free and uh, medicines are given there is a doctor to look after all these uh, children and uh, the mother uh, for loss of wages is compensated appropriately and it's see, it, it seen that uh, about 30 20 children are admitted from over the uh, area of uh, the primary center and after three weeks there is some gain in weight but uh, once they go home probably that uh, gain is lost and they have to come back and uh, again get treatment so it is a it is a uh, game of uh, loss and gain uh, but uh, what happens is the mother learns about how to feed the child and how to take care that is an important thing that the mother takes home so probably that's what is going to take the child across apart from whatever medical help it has got uh, in the CTC the third level is the uh, district level NRC uh, here uh, the child is admitted for two weeks sometimes three weeks and they get all the treatment as plus some more additional care by experts in the NRC uh, presently what we see here is the NRC in the Nandurbar district which is a tribal district in the uh, district uh, hospitals there are also this NICU so uh, some babies might need that so with all this NRC and NICU it's a very good composite unit and I think uh, the Nandurbar NRC is doing well Nandurbar district is a tribal district which is having 10 rural hospitals 2 sub-district hospitals and 58 primary health centers. At present, Nandurbar District Hospital is functioning with a 20-bedded nutritional rehabilitation center at District, Ho District Hospital Nandurbar since November 2011. Nutritional rehabilitation center at Nandurbar District Hospital is working with a good speed. Initially, for 2011 and 12, we could admit at the most 40 SAM babies in our hospitals and they were treated very properly. Since 1st April 2012 to 31st March of 2013, we could treat 172 babies of SAM which were covered for 14 to 21 days and they were discharged very nicely with 15% of their weight gain. Other babies were being sent back after 14 to 21 days with their all Buddhist Mazuri and uh, their daily wages they were paid from the district hospital at Nandurbar and we could take a uh, follow-up camp at CTC Dhadga, that means rural hospital Dhadga and Akalkua. At present in Nandurbar district, at Dhadga there is a child treatment center, at Akalkua there is a child treatment center and Navapura child treatment center where the Sam Mam babies have been admitted and with all protocols they have been followed. Akalkua and Dhadga we can reduce the infant mortality rate from 32% to 29% since last 6 months. That is a achievement of our Nandurbar district health facilities and health network. But we'll still, we will improve ourselves from our best part of hands. The mission has also introduced uh, amylase rich foods. Now amylase is uh, uh, a natural uh, enzyme which develops in sprouting grains uh, and uh, these grains are sprouted and then they are dried and flour, uh, made into a flour and then that is used as uh, an ingredient in these special feeds. This is supposed to be good for 
uh, digestion and the rehab is easier uh, with these amylase foods. In some areas where there are um, high rainy areas or uh, damp weather, the amylase uh, uh, feed is not a very successful thing. They have not been able to prepare this and probably some kind of mold grows there and uh, amylase feeds are unpopular in some of the districts. Uh, between the special feed that is uh, prepared for milk and uh, uh, the sugar and oil etc and the amylase feeds uh, there is some age for the uh, the milk based uh, uh, special feed